Always a treat when you come down, Alex. Nice to be here. And Alex from Source Distribution, I might add, uh, and the new Artoria drum brew. Who yeah. Who knew? Who knew? Yeah, I know, right? So obviously this is a bit of a surprise if, if people weren't aware, unless this is leaked. Hopefully not. Um, but yeah, so this is the new analog drum machine from Archeria. Like, who knew? Um, but here it is. And um, it's, it's a big old bird, isn't it? It, it really is. is. So it's, yeah, and you know, you can see what it is, and it is what it looks like. So it's an analog drum machine. It has 17 analog sounds inbuilt um, and they're available concurrently. So All right, so even though I noticed there are some mode switches on, but you can access them all. Absolutely. You can flip between these two. So you've got um, a complete analog voice set. Do you know what I mean? And so um, all of it available simultaneously. And we've got a 64 step sequencer on board. Uh, and kind of like beat step. Pro yep, sort of look. Very yeah. much so, but with its, some of its own tweaks. So, I mean, you can do some very cool things. One of the key ones is polyrhythm. So we can have every single one of these, um, well, every single one of these voices is available simultaneously, and we can sequence them all simultaneously, and we, every single one can have its own step length. So this is, this is one of the things that everybody was screaming out for on the Beatstep Beat Pro, Pro, but so now we can it do, does this do it on this. per voice. So each, each one of these voices has its own sequence of track, yeah. basically. So you can have you know, a kick drum that's on four, and then you could have the uh, open hi-hat pattern on seven or 38 or something like that. Do you know right. what I mean? And then you get this sort of polyrhythmic thing where the beat doesn't quite repeat each, the same each time. Um, and we have some pattern controls like roller. Um, we can swing. We can nudge steps right and left. So again, this is sort of, of beat, beat pro type kind of beat territory. 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 Um, and we have an output filter, um, which is like the Steiner Parker filter, which is low pass and high pass. And what else? Uh, direct outs. Right, so the mix out, I guess the filter only works on what the mix output? It does. So like the mix output is passed through the filter. But if you want, like I was doing in the little sort of start jam, I had just the uh, the hats and the claps on their own channels. And so then you, you can, them and it, yeah, you, you want to do that. It's so fun being able to just affect individual elements. It's, uh, or obviously you just record the whole thing separately if you're in the studio. So uh, outputs are on mini jacks, the main outputs. The mix is a mono mix, is it? There's no it panning is. of voices. There's right? no, it's not stereo. So, and yeah, these are all mono mini jacks, by the way, as well. So if you are getting, if you're investing in cables, get mono cables uh, and then mono into your interface, into your mixer, whatever you've got, and you've got direct outs for everything. And obviously you know that when you tap one of the direct outs, it removes it from that mix output. Ah. The other thing, um, clocking, you saw I was messing with the micro brew here, and yeah. that's, that's because you have analog clock input and output, you have MIDI clock input and output, and you have USB clock input and output, and obviously sequencing. So MIDI, and via MIDI and USB, Drum Brute will send all of its pattern data and it will receive it too. So you can use it as a sound module. Um, so both, you know, a drum sequencer and a drum synth. In so I guess that asks the question, well, a number of questions. First of all, velocity sensitivity? Yes, so the pads themselves are 100% velocity sensitive, as in from zero to 127. Now, the analog voices themselves do have a level control and they are um there's basically two stage so right, there's so it's a, like accent almost yeah yeah exactly there's like a normal and then there's a hard um and i believe i was advised by archeria that on certain voices it actually does root it changes the voice slightly tonally as you do it you can certainly I notice hit, that on one of the kicks yeah uh, like when the kicks are you know when they're hard they're hard and when they're soft they're, it just dials it back a little bit but we should point out that this is pr we're filming this prior to release, we so are. you're very much kind of only had it for a while. I've had no it for manual. a couple of days, and I've been I've <laughs> right. been having a lot of fun, <laughs> that's for sure. And I, yeah, the manual is not complete and stuff, so um, you're going to have to shout at me if I get anything wrong. Okay, so big um, one thing that's really interesting: we've got 
two kicks. Yeah. So let's let's hear the voices, and I'll just take these out so that we're we kind of know what we're doing, and it's all all obvious where it's going. So yeah, two kicks now. Kick one. Might sound familiar. Has a certain echoes a certain certain classic. A certain classic. As well, uh, this one too. So that's well, basically, first one's eight away. That's first one's nine and nine. Second one's more like an eight away. Exactly. Um, so you've got this kind of two worlds. Again, they are analog voices. And if you see on the, um, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing on the panel, but for each um, each voice has has some parameters. Some have more than others. The kicks have have loads because you really want to dial those in. Um, with the kind of um, kick one nine oh nine e kick, we have a few different things. The key is pitch, just so you can you can really tune these things. Um, we have a decay control from very short and clicky to long, so you can sculpt that. And then you have impact. Can you hear? It's like a little click, like flag. Little I tick. guess transient. Yeah, it's like a little sort of tick. And when it's buried in a mix. It really helps you, like you know, reinforce that the bass drum's there, and then you have sweep, which is a kind of yeah. classic. So one thing I should ask: I mean, all these parameters uh, is this stored with patterns? I mean, it's not. No. So these, like, you can store all the pattern data with velocity um, and so forth, um, but you can't remember that. You can't store the um, right. The knobs. So, no. so it's like the mini brute in that sense, like you know, you could, or like the micro brute in that you can store patterns, but you can't save. Them. Right. It's fully. So, it's a fully analog experience. It is from super. That. You know, it's from it's the like waist an down. I suppose. If yeah, exactly. And analog from the waist down. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can use that. I will use that. I think we'll put that on the packet. Um, so the, yeah. So it, it, yeah, that is a limitation. You can't. You can't do that. And. And it's it's the key point to point out with all of this is that you really can push the voices into sort of different territory. So um, I, I should say um, sonically, uh, the intention behind the machine, I think, from our cheery side chatting to them was to make something that could sort of live. They identified this kind of trifecta of of drum machines, which is on one corner techno, and on the other corner is kind of electro, mm. and then the other is sort of Berlin school sort of you know 70s drum machines and that sort of vibe. And their intention um, was to make something that could live within those worlds. Oh, hip hop as well is that kind of you know like that sort of tonally. Um, and from playing around, hopefully that will come across from us messing with it. But I really feel it does live within that somehow. It can be techno. It can be quite. Right. Electric, I mean, the one thing I will say, listening. I mean, classic. we haven't got it. We haven't got it massively loud in the room. No, we so haven't. Obviously, our open yeah, yeah. stuff. But it's really woody. It's got this kind of. Yeah, I know what you mean. It, it, it definitely sounds analog to me. It's got that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the snare, right? So let's go on to the snare. So the snare can go very short, very snappy. And then we have a snap tone. Like oh, a so we give it a real, yep. And then you have a level for the amount of snap. And then when you take that away, you're left with just the body of it, which is yeah. called tone, drum tone. So you have an individual control for the tone and an individual control for the snap. And so between so it's those 808 stylish, but with a bit more yeah, to it. Yeah, super is like, and it can do. You know, if you leave it short and cracky. It, it is super satisfying. It's got a nice kind of sound to it. But you can push it into different sort of quite um, mellow, you know, if you take the snap out, it can be quite sort of soft and CR kind of, of yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, and that's that sort of the Berlin thing. It, it can really sound like old classic drum machines as well, not just the techno, you know, techno and hip hop favorites. And then you've got a uh, clap. And then we just have one control, which is tone. So you can go really sort of thin and bright. So it's like a, that's almost like a band kind of thing. Yeah. I'm not sure what's actually going on behind the scenes there, but it's, yeah, it has that sort of boom. It's very hard not to do filter mouth with that sweeping I'm that doing clap. doing the duck mouth. You <laughs> <laughs> have to. And then so you've got um, rim. And that's got a nice woody yeah, quality yeah, to it, Yeah, super. It? And then if you have that on sort of sixteenth notes, it starts to get very electro. Claves? Is it claves or clave? clave? Clave. I believe. Very is nice. The correct term. Okay. Put me right. So you've got claves, but we don't have any tone control. But we do for the rim, and that's like right. it gives it more it's body. Got, it's, yeah. yeah, that's a nice. 
And then remember all of these things, you can layer them up. You could be playing them side by side, sort of building, you know, combined drum sounds, combining kick one and two as you go. And then you get onto the hats. So, and these I think are quite, um, they're quite distinct. So close. So metallic, metallic ring yeah. rod noise type thing. Do you hear that? Right. So there's, there's choke built in. So when the open hi-hat is playing, the closed hi-hat chokes it. Um, we have independent pitch for the hats, which is clean. So you can get it a bit more ticky. Just sort of it points it, yeah, it makes it a bit sort of changes the character. I think there are, as far as I'm aware, um, I believe they're the same circuit, but obviously with the choking built in. Um, the nice thing is you can have sort of, you can either have two very different open hi-hats or you can have two very different closed hi-hats or you can, you know, bring oh, them... Right, so it gives you a bit more flexibility. Do you know what I mean? Bring it. them close and pitch together. So they can relate to each other or they can be their own, own yeah. kind of tonal. You know, see what I mean? You can end up with two different things. But they're very sort of um, good for techno, right. basically. And then we have congas. I'll just zero these. The usual pitching. That's your more kind of CR seventy eight nine oh nine type of thing, isn't it? I've got to say, like I've I've spent a lot of time with drum machines where I've got just bass drum, snare drum, and and hats, you know, in sort of Euro rack world and stuff. You know, it's easy to just be satisfied with those, but having the sort of the congas, it's the bibble, the top, bibble bobble, the bibble bobble. Thing yes, is it's so nice just being able to have that available, and you do make quite sort of tribal stuff. So uh, when you're switching voices... So what I'm doing is I'm they... switching the trigger. So they, they share, these these do share a pitch control. Right, okay, so they're not, they do, yeah. they're not independent. They're from not everyone. completely, yeah. but they can be completely independently sequenced. Right. So I can, you know, I can trigger the congas or the toms, and I can sequence them totally individually. Right. Um, but yeah, so, and they, you know, you've got a bit of range, so you can tune these elements, and then the congas. Right, it gets, you know, because you can tune both the bass drums and you can you tune can the get conga, some pitch stuff. You get, you know, like, yeah. you can do proper kind of well, drum solos. You know, it's, <laughs> it's for like the techno thing again. It's where the drum machine is the star. Like, Put the needle on the record. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not Jeff Mills, but like, I'm sure he would have fun with this. And then we have the sort of cymbal section, which uh, the cymbal sounds like this. Yeah. Which to me is very 808. 808 you know, and that's like, oh, I love that. You hear them at the sort of two level. Yeah, it's got the, a hi hat almost top with a noise tail. Depending on how hard we hit it. By the way, um, did we we did mention these are completely velocity yes. sensitive? So but over MIDI, presumably. Over MIDI, yeah. yeah. The other thing is just there is a threshold which is default is set to 110, where the drum machine interprets your um, how hard you hit it and then writes it to the sequencer. You can change that. If you if you hit the pads very softly and you want the changeover in threshold to you be lower, to set your... you can do that, by the way. It's, I just got it set quite hard. So we have a, a cymbal. You can go really, really, really long. But what's nice, you can go really short. So you can get into So it becomes hat. a hat as right. well. So you've got a completely different flavor of hat to the other hats as well. And then again, in combination, you get all kinds of fascinating stuff. Um, what is quite unusual, uh, I would I think you would agree. Is a reverse? A reverse symbol. A reverse symbol. Like, no, I think that probably lays claim to being the only analog drum machine with a reverse symbol sound. I think you're right. Yeah, and I mean, they share a decay setting, the reverse and the, um, the normal right. symbol, but you can get some really nice push-pull things when you time it just right. Um, and there's a tone control for the symbol. That takes, yeah, takes, takes sort of the body and yeah. like a sweepable thing. Um, and then lastly, coming to the final end bits, we've got maracas. Ah, essential. Got to have it. Um, and then tambourine. No cowbell. No cowbell. That is sad, isn't it? Yeah, sometimes. Well, well yeah, if you really must have, I'm sure there could be a cowbell module available for the specialist. So you have to get an 808 as well just to have the, the cowbell, but no, yeah. I like that's, that, that's got that sort of cicada kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, the, the way that you hear it peters out. That's a CR78 tambourine, yeah, right, yeah. isn't it, basically? Or, yeah. Yeah, it's like the rattlesnake, as you said. Um, so yeah, you do have that. And then finally, we have Zap, which um, I think we sort of agreed is probably needs to be called Boo. Sintom. Sintom. 
So you can kind of do like, um, again, that is the sort of very like old school drum machine thing. It's kind of a disco sound. Yeah. But like with all of these voices, because you can kind of squish and push them around, um, you can make this into quite a short, quite low percussive like grunt. Um, and then if you have that in combination with the kick. Two kicks, you're getting quite. You have this kind of, you have three sort of yeah, like some real soupy, fundamental soupy elements. Soupy stuff down there, but you yeah. just, If you're sort of syncopating those things, you can just end up with these astonishing rhythms because again, that's just to reiterate, you know, not to like labor the point, but from going from a drum machine, you know, I've had access to with a very small amount of voices. It's kind of amazing to have this amount of voices. And I think the other thing that we need to point out the price of this machine. Yeah, I thought is, maybe 699 and then yeah. you said, no, no. I mean, I've spoken to other people, like, what do you think this is worth? And they said, well, 1200 It's got to be a 1000 And it's like, for what this costs, you know, again, not to like, I remember when we talked about this with the BeatStep Pro, it's like not to be, you know, patronising. It's just, but it's, it's true. Like, there's no, there's no other drum machine I know of that will give you this much power in a full-size package for like anywhere near this sort of cost. Which so it, is? Which is going to be um, RRP 399 pounds. Okay, so, wow, that is, a, it, that is pretty And you don't impressive. have, every, like in the sense you don't have, you know, you, it doesn't recall the knob settings and things like that. But those, you know, I would argue like with the Mini Brew, I don't think, I don't think of those as limitations. I just think, you know, as you're playing around, the idea of this machine is to get hands on and mess about and make patterns and so, we should do that really and like so maybe if i um if i take us so by the way we've got um memories built in you have four banks which are a b c d and then you have 16 patterns in each bank right so that's 16 times four uh, you're gonna have to work that out because i'm um, yeah, four, six, three, four, 64. 64 um exactly right of course and so we have a metronome which we have a direct out for actually. So that is, at, so you could use that as a gate or a clip. I was or thinking yeah, that, and I haven't tried it, but like if you had a Juno 60 or something, it might trigger an arm. Like, could it? you, or you maybe amplify it, but you do have a direct out. So if you were playing along with a drummer, you could, you can send that out individually and it won't be coming out of your mix out. So something to bear in mind. Plus, also, there's different, um, you can have different, oh, by the way, you can run the sequencer at different resolutions, but you can also run the metronome at different resolutions. Um, so, so you could use it for clock division, multiplication. Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. Okay, nice function. Um, so we've got a metronome, and we have two different ways of entering notes, a bit like the the beat step. So we've got we can just hit the pad. Record, Record real time, just like that. Now um, we want to do eight to eighty style programming. So if we hit step, here are my notes. So if I um, dab in some notes, do you see that I can put in blue is soft, red is hard? Yeah, I mean, it's and not so, massively different. It, it, no, no, it it's not like... It changes the tone a little bit, yeah, it? does. It? Um, but it's not like a crazy... We're not talking a crazy, crazy level change, obviously, but enough to get this kind of rhythm. Um, and then, obviously, we can do that for every single element. What I put in, I did hard enough that it, it just came yeah. in as red. The other thing, again, just to point that out, is if I hold steps and do swing do you see it nudges ah so you can nudge individual steps which you is can, again a bit of beat step pro territory also right? you may be screaming can you record unquantized yes you can so you can turn off quantization while you pre-record so you can record without quantization and it bakes it into the sequencer with the slip and slides baked in to represent the accuracy or slackness of your recording uh, okay, whatever it may useful. be right. you can hold shift to pre-select a sound if I don't want to um, hear it. You know? I mean, I'm seeing immediately, you know, that's three voices, and because you're tweaking and getting yep. the sound, you're molding the sound to the I'm sort of, the I'm listening to them and just trying to go, how can I, how can I make these work together? is I was playing around with this making patterns and kind of wishing that I was just recording the whole thing because you, oh, start, you, you yeah, start performing it's constantly evolving. because the actual the experience of, of messing around with these is yeah, you just end up wanting to perform it. A good example of that is the clap. 
doing that while the claps are sort of doing fast repeats is quite satisfying. I know, so just to point out another um, recording trick that you can do, if I am recording, so by the way, we have this, we have step repeat. Right. So we can sort of dab in little repeats and it picks up where the sequencer would right. have been in the background. So the sequencer continues, you let go and it comes back. We do have randomness that we can say affects only the current track. So now dialing in an element of randomness to the class. Again, oh, that's on the BFM Pro, but it seems to make more sense in this environment. I don't know, yeah. I mean, it's, for me, it's, it's really nice to have a little bit of randomness built into certain sounds, especially like the clap. And then you're just sort of free to kind of play around, and it, it, it's improvising. It's never quite the same thing twice. But then you can do that on each track individually. That's really I mean, you just change that and the whole yep. rhythmical emphasis has changed. We can mute elements. So we can mute there. So, uh, yeah, it's very geared towards performance, this, isn't it? And then it sort of saves our mute. So you can kind of perform your mutes and then, then you can clear your the mute that you had saved. So you can kind of toggle these on and off. And save the solo, presumably. Exactly. So this is what I was doing at the intro. I mean, obviously we've got... Let me show you another thing very quickly. If you have um, record enabled, the row is not working, but what it's doing is it allows you to record with... So you don't have to place that Exactly, in. so you can record very quickly record 16s. Um, and then the other thing is we can erase um, the pattern of that, that element. So you see here I've got 16s. Touch Erase. Touch Erase. Just name that, there you go. It's starting to get a bit syncopated. I can erase what's on those pads. So I'll erase the um, class as well. Take down the randomness. Um, did you hear that there was a kind of drill? On yeah. The, yeah, so we can do that ourselves. So if we go, um, perhaps if I go, And we do that by hold, holding the note and then pushing the according step repeat. So it's like ratchet. Sort it's like of ratchet, type. yeah. So I mean, if and that's did, written in there. That is that written in, yeah. Ah, okay, right, right, right. Well, that's quite cool, isn't it? <laughs> and again, that's changed from what that basic pattern is. It's now right. flipped again. something else entirely. Yeah, absolutely. very very interesting to mess around with and like um, like I'm saying it can take you to different places so you can do kind of very um, hard techno stuff and it's, it becomes really in its own when you you're processing it too like all you know all drum machines I know it's when you're it. the pattern obviously we've got the filter on there I mean can sorry you yeah, get that pattern? yeah we can, can so can let's we... let's go to like um, like uh, perhaps one of the other banks where have I got uh, let's try this so a 16 this has got a bit of a sexual healing vibe. <laughs> yeah, it's got a sort of... I'm fine Sen though, thanks. Sen yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, I hope you like it, but... Um, so yes, we have this filter. Which is a Steiner Park filter. So I had loads of resonance on there. And then we have bypass, so you can just bring it in and out. Right, so you yeah. can almost use it like a killing cube. Absolutely, like yeah, that's the idea. So, but actually, um, yeah, by the way, we also have high pass, so. That's nice. So you're right, like you can, you would use it as a killing cue to sort of just get the very end of the pattern and bring it back. But actually one thing that I noticed is, I found myself leaving it on sometimes just to roll and age the sort of, like roll off some of the high because there's lots and lots and lots of detail in the sounds. 
So you can just use that as an overall smudge it, tone control. Vintage, a, a smudge, yeah. a vintage. Do you know what I mean? Like, so you can kind of. Um, where's my? Uh, That's neat. So um, tempo. Yes. Uh, and swing, I suppose, is the key thing because the shuffle and the swing are kind Absolutely. of pretty important can... to a lot of. So Same can... sort of swing as you get on the beat tempo, I guess. And you can swing everything, or you can just swing each individual track. Right. Yeah. So. So now polyrhythm. Polyrhythm. Guys. So, if I hold shift and turn that on, then we're in polyrhythm. It, it keeps doing what it was doing. It keeps everything else at the same length. But we can now go through and adjust the individual lengths. Right. Um, individual so I can, track lengths. Exactly. So perhaps, I mean, toms and congas are fun. So. So we can do something with that. So hold last step. So do you see it's set to 16 and we're on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just, it's showing that it's actually set to 32 because we're flashing here. So I'm going to set it to something like seven. So now the high conga is seven. Right, so we can create, yeah. Yeah. You can get really wonky really fast. Absolutely. Claps, it does that. It sounds like you know those little sort of scrapey, Guero, scrapey Guero, frog. Guero. Guero. A scrapey frog. Yeah, that, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. That's like claves and claves, sorry. So having those kind of funny little, you know, polyrhythms that, that obviously never quite repeat is fun again for techno type stuff where you've just got simple elements repeating. It's really fun, like having so many voices, you just can do so many different things rhythmically. And I'm kind of caning all of the levels, which I shouldn't be doing, because there's a lot to be said. Given that you've got like three hats, having all three at different levels, you can end up with a very, yeah. very like um, expressive like pattern. You just so much kind of detail and rhythm and life built into a pattern. If you take the time, that's awesome. Take the time to like iron it out. Uh, yeah, it, it, uh, and. Um, we got a global tempo, or is it tempo per? So you can do both. So the tempo, um, we can tap tempo, so if you're playing with a band, etc. Um, but yeah, you can have it so that there's a global tempo that the drum brute respects. When you change through the patterns, it will stick at that global tempo. Or you can have tempos, you do it with this, global BPM. I've got it off, so right. that when I, each pattern's got its own BPM built in. But if I do that, it will stay at whatever. And I guess by the same token, song chains, pattern chaining, that sort yeah. of thing. I mean, that's something that's never quite been sort of. We can do that. We so can like, do that here. Can yeah, we? you can. So um, let me see. So it was uh, D four five six, and my, my sort of um, a little jam that I was doing. Uh, so D four. Um, so this is like a little jam that I was making where I've got kind of elements on four, five, and six. I mean, it wasn't probably set up like this for the voices. Right, okay. So. That's manual. So that's right? manual, you know, these are my kind of four, five, and six are kind of what I'm, I'm enjoying. They kind of all work together. So if I then put it into song mode, um, basically I can hit record and then it's asking me to go through, pick a bank, pick patterns and go, so uh, it was four, five, six, wasn't it? Uh, yes. No, I think it's five, six, seven. Five, six, seven, I think. Yeah, I think that. it was. So five, five, six, six, seven, 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 seven. So now it's in song mode and it's telling me I'm playing D5. And you can, you can record those song modes? Is uh, it, or is that a temporary thing? No, 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 you can record and save them and they can be up to 16 patterns long. So you hear it's now cycling through them in the order that I dab them in. Right. And so you can have up to 60. So that's, the sim okay. that's similar to what the Beat Step Pro started doing, yeah. but, but you can save them. Yeah. So it's kind of, think of it as a way of just chaining together patterns into a longer arrangement. So if you want to go way beyond 64 steps, then you could use this as a way of chaining up to 16 patterns together right. in whatever combination that you want. And this is looping. And it'll just loop around and around. And you can save 16 of these, 16 of these songs. So I go save song. Right. And then it's there when I power cycle the machine. So um, a few other things. Can you actually 
Can you pull that uh, MIDI data out, the sequence data out, once you've got yes. it in there, because backup. So what we important. don't have shown here, but which is fully implemented in, is their MIDI control center software. So right, exactly so like on the BeatStep Pro, just pull it all out you pull it out there, and you can see all your pattern data. You can, I, because I, I was making a whole load of patterns that I don't have here. I've saved all of the patterns that I like that I made when I was playing around with it, and I've got my own memory, and I loaded their memory really easy. And then that little, this little thing was something that I made back home, so I just dragged those Same into deal. its memory, and it's really easy then just to go, right, I want these, I want those there, just drag and like, you know. And then you, because you can actually see the patterns in there, you could, if you, there were specific patterns that you wanted, you just wanted to draw them in, you can do that. Right. right. Um, it's really easy to save memories. The other thing is that you can um, change various aspects to do with the way the machine works, how it responds to clocks, PPQN, things like that. So it can it can respond to Volkers. It, Ooh. Can, it can respond <laughs> Natively? to- Natively? Yes, it can. So <laughs> Finally. So yeah, exactly. And then that micro brute is absolutely fine. Uh, it can do 48 and 24 PPQN for DIN. Um, and you can change like that velocity level of these. You can change what um, MIDI note all of the pads send. You know, sort of kind of all of the obvious stuff wow. um, can be edited in the, the software and then saved to memory. Um, well, well, we've we've been very complete in this. Uh, in this, what started out as an overview, we really covered everything, which is fantastic. That's almost so, it. Yeah, I'm sure there's more. But. I'm sure there is, but that's that's, a, that's fantastic. Alex, thank you so much. Thanks, I guess thanks. really what you should play. Out, I think you should turn the microbrew up and see what that pattern let's, sounds let's like. See, with. Let's have a bit of a jam. <laughs>